Okay, uh, for the next fly I'm going to be tying, this is the, the grunter. The, 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 this pattern is it's not mine, this is just a colour combination that I like. Uh, personally, uh, it's a great pattern, so it's good for representing many, quite a few different flies. Uh, especially good in the river as much as it is in the loch, so that's why it's so so popular. And the hair's ear version you can't go wrong with. This is very good for the March Brown, so if you want to fish for the March Brown, I'll use this pattern as an emerger, this would be the, certainly one. But say in the lock it works just as well. So thread I'm going to be using is the, is the uni thread in red. Now you hook. I'm going to stick to the, the, this white gape, the short shank special, size 10, 10, 12s, 14s, any size this fly will still work. Depends on this, it'll represent a species of fly if it's tied in a certain size. So it's quite simple. Start to the eye. I usually come down the thorax length or so. Now you want to get yourself some CDC. Depending on the size of the fly, it could be in the smaller flies, I have single feather to this one here. I'm going to use three. So it's three CDC feathers. These are uh, just a normal duck. This is a mother duck. Just lay them on top of one another. We tie them forward. So basically, what I'm going to do is take my thread up to a head length away from the eye. So you've got to give yourself room to tie off. So we just catch this in. Now you're looking for a length to balance the hook, so you look at least the hook length. Now once you've got two or three turns in, you can come in at the top here and trim at an angle. Now that will give you a taper cut. Now a taper cut will give you basically a taper when you wind on it. So if you wind on to that, it just tapers away. And it just, it just goes with the fly, that's just the natural shape of the fly. Now on the way down I'm going to tie in a red holographic tinsel. Now it could be a medium or a small. This is just a tag at the back of the hook. And I'm going to come round the bend in this case. I'm going to round to this point here. And then I'm going to come back up tag length. It's round about two, two and a half mil. Now to protect that, I'm just going to wind over. Super glue is probably the best, but varnish is good as well. So I'm just going to use the varnish. So we touch a varnish just at the back here, not too much. This will protect your tag at the back. Couple of turns, that's fine. Because this is a medium sized tinsel. If you were using a small, it'd probably be three or four turns. Just trim that the length. Just the length of the body. Now we can run my thread up quite quick, space the turns out just to go up quick. Come back down, just to see where we are. That's fine. Now, blend is a... This is a blend of uh, hair's mask, uh, basically, and some rabbit. You can mix two or three fibres in it. You can even blend in a wee touch of flash if you want. Don't need too much. Now all I do is remove it from the, the, the head or the skin, and then I blend it into a small... I use a coffee grinder. So we just lightly dub that on and then we anchor it, meaning we get a turn just onto the body so that we can actually tighten to that and form a nice shape in it, a nice taper. So we tighten up when we need to, we can come back on the turn just to thicken it if we need as well. That's fine. Now if you want to rub the fly, it's up to yourself. You can rub it even with the thread, you can rub it with even the holographic tinsel, it's up to yourself. Now what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to tie in a the partridge hackle. Now you can put the partridge hackle on front, you can tie it at the back. Uh, I just like to mix it. So we've got a brown partridge. It's the feather here. Now I want to try and keep the stem. If I tear this away, what normally happens with these feathers they break. I mean you can still use them but just basically what you do is just trim away the fluff rather than tearing it off like you would normally do in a hackle. Just trim it away. Because we only need this this part here. Now I'm going to tie it in at the tip so basically pull it back so you can reveal the tip of the, the feather. Three or four turns to skewer it in Trim that away. Now, I found the main hackle to help float the fly as well. 
This is a furnace. It's a cork, it's a, this is a saddle, as you see, a long feather. Now, I found that works. It just helps to darken the thorax a wee bit. You can access this on. Make sure you wax your thread, that gives you a wee bit extra grip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some of the dubbing in here. Just a wee touch, it just tidies things. It makes it easier for the hackle to wind on, rather than winding it straight onto the, the thread. Now, what I'm going to do is take my thread to the front, just in front of the CDC. I'm going to bring the hackle up. Now, you could have the hackle going forward or going tapering back. Just wind the hackle through the thorax, just lift the wing up. Just catch it. Just, I'm just lifting the wing out here so I can catch it in. Good. Four or five turns, trim away. Now we want to wind our battery shackle now. It's going to, have to slightly twist on you, but with the cock hackle and you're winding through it, it is quickly winding through. This will lift the fibres. Just up your weight, just work through, just be, it will sit for you. And then try and get the, the stem just slightly in front of the wing. Just, I just bring it underneath here, use my nail to catch it nice and tight. And then because it, these feathers, the stems are really thin, you can fold it back and then just focus on nice head. Forget everything just now. And what you like to do is come in. Now, if you, if you want, uh, you can actually wind the patchy shackle up first and then the hackle. Uh, it will basically, it, it, it will still work if you feel that's easier. But that, that, that's, that's the way I like. Or you can even, uh, sometimes I've actually wound in front uh, with the partridge. There are different ways of tying it. Uh, this is actually the way I've been tying it. And originally, I actually tied it more for the locks than I did the river. But if I remember right, the CDC can be tied so it's laying over it. So it's laying over the top, uh, so basically it holds it more like a thorax cover, the CDC. It, it, it's another way of doing it. Uh, but this is just the way I, I tied it. And uh, it's a great style, so it, it's always worth messing about with it. Even the way you tie it, that, that's what fly tying is all about. You get a way you like, and uh, if you're happy, you just stick to it. So that's what I'm doing. So finish off with a wee bit of varnish. Just pull your wing back, just lightly. And there we are. And now again, that's a very popular one in uh, the lochs, as I say, and the river. And uh, for me, in the smaller sizes, I've got, you know, the 12, I've got when there's uh, olives coming off, uh, especially in the river, and March browns, obviously, because of the colour. But they still take it even when the olives are coming off. And when you're on the loch, it will give the impression of caddis, which is midge. That's why it's so popular, because it's a suggestive type pattern. Really good. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one, and uh, certainly one I would add to add in the fly box.